So this video is about assembling these migratory pallets. I usually do this in two stages, a day apart at least. So this plywood I've cut to 33 and a half by 21 and 5 eighths. The beehives will sit here, center divider, shims, entrance, entrances here or there. I've determined the entrances here because I've already drilled my drain holes here. I like to drill those beforehand because I can stack the plywood and drill four of them at a time and it makes a nice job because every cut is backed up. So here, here we go. I'm going to just assemble one of these at least. I'm going to assemble what I call the underpinnings. So I'll try and pick the nice side. It doesn't really matter. There's big ugly knot there. I mean, there's ugly knots anywhere, but you know, if you have a choice, make it nice on the top. There's three two by fours under underneath. If there's any. Uh, this is not bad, but if there's any bark or or craziness going on in the two by fours, put that down for now, and we'll take care of that later. You know, this two by four is a big ugly knot here, another knot there. I mean, that's that's really nasty. But we can use it, no problem. I'm using uh, probably an overkill glue here, adhesive, the page PL Premium. This is awesome stuff, very weatherproof. It'll glue cement blocks together if that's what you want to do. So, I know I glue things a lot, but there's a lot of strength in glue. There's a lot of strength in glue. I'm going to put this one in the middle. So I'll set that one over for a moment. And I'll just slide this in under here. I built a lot more pallets last year. I made myself a little jig. I could just set my 2x4s in, glue them, put the plywood down. That worked really nice. I'm a little too lazy to build that jig this year because I'm only building a dozen or so pallets. So I just line that up to the end. I kind of messed up there. It's a, sitting a little proud, but you know, it's not furniture. Not what I aim for, but it's, you know, if you want to fix it then fix it, you know. There you go. I put five screws in all the way down. Put this one right in the middle. And then I put one between each of those. Okay. So that's that's that. And I'll go along and do this end here. Okay, so now for the center one, it doesn't have to be bang on dead center. Don't get too concerned about that. I get them plenty close to center this way. Half of my pallet distance is 16 and 3 quarter. So I'll just make a nice mark right there. I can see my eyes are very good. So having a nice black mark like that is really easy. So just slide this in, try not to get glue everywhere, just so I can sort of see it on the other end, that it's somewhere near where it should be. I'll more or less center that on this end, on that mark. And then I can't see the 2x4 there on the other end, but I have a trick. Just put my fingers around it, and then I can see the the space the 2x4 makes, get that black mark right in between my fingers, and it goes. So again, I'll put five screws, one right in the middle, and I'll put one between those two. 
two of these screws will eventually come out. I'll tell you why. When the pallet's all assembled, the underpinning's all assembled, and the glue is dry, I'll pull these two screws out. They're not really uh, necessary at that point because I need to put my U-clip in here. The U-clip is going to sit somewhere in here, you know, as you could see on the other pallet I showed you. So the U-clip sits here and here. Um, that 2x4 in the center has to be mostly aligned with this U-clip because I put a three, a number 10 by 3 inch pan head screw in this U-clip uh, right down into that 2x4. Holds this very, very firmly. This takes a lot of abuse uh, from the boxes on top. So after I put that big 3 inch screw in here, this one is quite irrelevant. It's only there to clamp the glue at this point. Right? So that one can come out. Just save some screws. It's not hurting anything in there, but it just saves some screws. You know, I'm making 20 or uh, I don't know, 15 pallets maybe here today. And so I'll have 30 screws left over if I just take those out. I can't finish until then because that two inch center uh, shim goes atop those screws. So that's, that's that for the top. I'm going to take my temporary 2x4s out here. I'm going to flip this over. I need to mark where my runners go. So I made a little jig here that's got just a, a little gauge. This gauge is uh, two and a quarter inches. Another mistake I made the first year I made these is I made the distance between the runner and the lid cleat too small. They don't they don't fall into place as nicely as I'd like. So I've been trying to not I've tried I've been trying to do a worse job of that measurement. It's just standard one by four. Sometimes I cut my parts out of one by sixes and I'll, I'll use what's left and it's maybe four, uh, uh, three inches instead of three and a half. That's, that's fine. You want, you know, you want a bit of width here just so they don't break. When you drive a screw through a board, uh, they'll crack, especially when you're over here near the end. So pre-drill and they'll start, don't know if you can see, that two by four goes over to here. So start closer to the 2x4 and just sort of angle that a bit. Right. Now in doing this, I'm making little holes here in that. It doesn't really matter at this point that there's a hole in that. I don't worry about it because I'm wax dipping these later on. I don't want the wood chips under the runners, so I've got to blow it away. Uh, so we'll wax dipping later on, that'll all get wax dipped and whatnot. I don't believe it's going to be a problem. More of this wonderful glue. Just where that runner is going to be. I love this glue. Keeps running for half an hour after you let the trigger go. Okay, so easy peasy. Get some screws. It's got a big knot at the end of this one. That's not exactly what I like to see. So you you remember me saying that I was being too exact with this. I'm setting this back another sixteenth of an inch. So I should have at least quarter of an inch of I should have at least a quarter of an inch of slack between the, the lid cleat and the runner on each end. I'll see how that works out this summer. My building last year I I loosened that up a bit too and it seemed to work a bit better. Those are below surface. It's that big knot. It's hard to 
curated. You can screw those off on this side, but I find it's a little easier just to spin that around. Something cracked there. I wonder what cracked. So that's it. That's that's it for part one of this assembly. When all that glue's set, I clean it up. I get my chisel and I just cut all the, the squeeze out glue away again it's just to make it look a little nicer and then of course remove these two screws and install all the cleats I'll use my tight bond 3 on the top uh, for the cleats and either staples or nails to hold those on I'll make another video of that when the time comes have fun <laughs>